Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today we're going to talk about how you can cheaply and effectively winterize your water supply um, for a bug out bag, for hiking, camping, what have you. So, you know, a lot of people presume, especially, you know, when we're talking about bugging out, I mean, if you ever had to bug out in winter, you know, shit, your the chances of survival are pretty slim if you were doing it on foot because the number one cause of death, of course, is exposure. So, you know, I see a lot of bug out bag videos who are sort of just oblivious to this, that if you don't have a way to, well, number one, heat yourself, uh, you're going to be in for a world of misery out there. And, but secondly is the water supply. Now, there's a couple approaches you could take to packing water. You could use containers, but I think for the purpose of winter, you're better off using something like a Camelback or an Aquapack. There's a few advantages to that. One is that you're, if you put it in your back, uh, close to your back in your backpack, your body heat will keep it warm. Uh, but sometimes that might not even be enough to keep it warm. You don't want a lot of your body heat to be um, expelled through conduction that way. So any way that you can insulate your water is, is going to be, uh, and prevent it from freezing, especially if you have one of these hose devices, which you would need for this is going to be beneficial. Now you can get this stuff from your local textile distributor. Uh, we have a place in Canada called, what is it called again? Fabric land. There's also Century Textiles. I believe those are both chains that are across Canada. And what this is is needle insulated lining. So as you can see here, uh, it tells you all the potential uses for this stuff. Ideal for your warm home projects, coats, jackets, gloves, mittens, hats, slippers, vests, ski apparel, um, oven mitts, comforters, you know, pretty much everything that you, you'd want to sort of uh, do some climate control with. So because it's reflective material, it's not only going to keep the hot stuff hot, but it's going to keep the cold stuff cold. So it's not necessarily going to have negative effects in summertime. It'll actually have a positive effect so it'll keep your water cool. Now, this stuff here, you can buy a meter by 1.5 meter slab of it for about 15 bucks. And you can just get a lot out of it. I mean, you could use it for, you could cut out uh, uh, something like this for your shoes. I got these, uh, let me show you these two here. These are something I'm going to look into using and replacing for my EDC. You know, I have the foot warmers for my EDC. The only problem is those are one-time use, although they would be warmer than these. But I think I'm going to add these to my shoes anyways in winter just to add a bit more warmth. And what it is essentially is reflective material, you know. Um, I can't really explain how it's made. It's a very complicated process. They explain it on their website. And you can go look there on Inselbright's website. Now, what I've done, this I should show you this first. This is a Osprey winterized. This is a factory-made uh, winterproofing system. And it really only does winterproof the uh, the hose, you know, and all it is, is like a foam and a reflective shell. And basically what I have in here is just a water pack. I'm going to be doing the winter bug out bag pretty soon here. And this is just this stuff here. Now what I was thinking about doing and, you know, for my official bug out bag project, what I'm going to do is I have some canvas uh, that he just purchased from that textile place as well. And so I'm going to sew myself a little, you know, waterproof sack that's going to look something like that. And it's going to be very simple. There's not going to be any, you know, zippers or drawstrings or anything like that. And this is going to be uh, material within the canvas. So, you know, just to give you an idea of, of what I'm sort of thinking with it. And, you know, I mean, really all you would have to do is... Uh, even just putting that, folding that in there like that, wrapping it up, you know, that would keep your water warmer longer and prevent it from freezing longer than, you know, in the absence of it. And as you can see here with all my water bladders, I just reinforce them duct tape. 
I know, I'm like the red-green of prepping. But, you know, it's true, because any sort of little puncture in there can be a pain in the ass. So if you, you know, uh, just add a few strips of duct tape to the vulnerable parts, then, uh, you know, that's going to protect it a bit longer. Now, the kind of duct tape that you might want to look at, honestly, Gorilla Tape's going to work for anything. But the problem with vanilla or Gorilla Tape, it's a little too thick. This is Nashua uh, Winter Duct Tape. So it's made to withstand very low temperatures and not lose any of its qualities under low temperatures. Uh, in contrast to normal duct tape, which will lose a bit of its adherence power under you know, very cold conditions. So what I did here, essentially I just took a little strip of this right here and um, took a strip of this duct tape here and just rolled it around this. And this is what I got. And quite frankly, it looks better than this, you know. I mean, it's not as... Uh, it's actually thinner than this and it's probably going to do a better job because the foam in here is just normal foam can't show it to you right now but it's not even uh, this reflective foam so I have a feeling this is gonna work a lot better this is all gonna be tried and tested in the final product but this is something that's gonna be crucial because if this thing freezes up you know then it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get to your water so something to consider anyways if you're doing some sort of winter um, bug out bag and emphasis on that because there is a huge difference between the two. It's like trying to make a bug out bag for the tropics and use it in, you know, uh, a boreal forest Canada, Canadian climate. It's just, it, it's, it's silly to think that you can have, uh, there is no all season bug out bag. There's, you know, I mean, you can, you can try to do it to some extent, but there's so much required to withstand the elements of winter that it's simply not it's simply not practical to not have a dedicated winterized bug out pack and in addition to doing that it allows you to sort of you know really get acquainted with your gear especially if you don't use your bug out bag too much for anything else then it allows you to sort of change it out and make some tweaks as you go along as you change it from season to season so I hope this was uh, helpful. Definitely pick some of this stuff up, and I'm sure there's a lot of other creative things you can find it for or use it for. Uh, one of the things they talk about on here is a water heater wrap, you know, so there might be some more heavy-duty jobs that this stuff would be effective for. So something for you to keep in mind. But uh, anyways, let me know what you think about this. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. Canadian Prepper here. So I just wanted to do a follow-up. Uh, this is the cozy that I was able to make for the water bladder. And it's made out of canvas and that insulation material that I just showed you. And I didn't do a bad job. I'm sure the seamstresses of the world, of the preposphere, will weigh in. I have a feeling Prepper Potpourri will say something about my shitty uh, sewing job. You can see it's not straight, it's pretty jagged. But you know what? It's going to work. And I still got a little bit of sewing to do here. Just sew this thing up. And then that's good to go. If I even do that, I might not even do that. Because, I mean, it's going to stay in there. It's nice. It's, it's thick. It's got a lot of meat to it. It's a nice thick canvas. And it costs about maybe five bucks to make. So, and you know, you can go into a store and they'd sell you that for 30 bucks. You know, they could put a name brand on it like 5.11 or something, then they'd sell you that for 50 bucks probably. And this thing just sticks right in here. So now my water system is pretty much, you know, ensured to stay viscous to the point where I can actually drink it out of this tube. I don't know if that's the right word, but liquid anyways, as opposed to ice. And I might change this hose just the way it looks. I don't really like the way it looks. It looks a little tacky. But, you know, I mean, it, it's functional, and it's going to keep the water inside from freezing, and that's all I really care about. I could wrap it in some camouflage duct tape or some of those other wraps that they use for guns and stuff like that to, to make them camouflage. I don't know how well those would hold up 
under weather conditions, but cold weather conditions, but you know, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to be coming out with the official winter bug out bag video next week, and it's not going to be too personalized. I want it to be a bit more generally applicable to everybody. So, and the way I see it, you know, everybody's bug out bag is going to be different because there's so many variables that come into play, especially with respect to who's going to be in your party. If you have three or four people, you know, you're going to be able to distribute those items across those three or four people. So your bug out bag in and of itself might not be, uh, might not suffice to keep you surviving if it's geared towards a group. So, I mean, these are all things to take into consideration. So my video is going to be more of a ideas, concepts video, what you might want to take, what may work for you, what you perhaps haven't thought of yet. Because honestly, there is a thousand million bug out bag videos out there and very few of them are geared towards winter survival. And a big part of winter survival isn't even the bag itself. It is just the clothing that you're going to be wearing. That's going to be half of the weight that you wear in a winter bug out bag situation climate. You know, if you are bugging out in winter, as I said before, you know, the chances of uh, survival are pretty slim if you have nowhere to go. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos this winter with respect to winter camping, winter survival, um, shelter building, stuff like that, insulation. And just to, you know, keep the, keep the evolution of this whole prepping thing moving along. So expect that video next week sometime. And uh, if you guys have any other ideas with respect to insulating your items in your bug out bag, food or otherwise, let me know. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.